Kids, I'm gonna get right into the exercises here. These are nine of my favorite ones for groin strains that you can use right at home. You can follow along with me today. I'm gonna to supply a countdown timer and we're just gonna go right through it together. A lot of times when people have something like this, I like them to do this regimen on a daily basis for a month, roughly. It doesn't work for everybody, but if this really works for you, you may consider coming back to this video, watching it again tomorrow and the next day, and just follow along with me. We're gonna make this thing really easy for you. The only thing you're really gonna need is a non-stretchable strap like so, which could be something like a belt, it could be a jacket. It just can't really stretch because I wanna make sure the rest of your body actually stretches, not the object itself. The countdown timer is gonna be running. If you need to take little breaks, just take the little break, that's okay, but then jump back in with me, all right? None of these should really hurt. It should just feel a little stretchy and a little challenging. The first four are more of a stretchy type. The next five are gonna be more effortful. You'll love those ones too. Okay guys, we're gonna start with one exercise which is like a hamstring stretch. I'd ideally have that you do this in the bed. It's more, um, it's nicer on your spine and your hips. A lot of times people have sensitivity just from laying on hard surfaces like I am today. Let's use the strap for the first few. Now we're gonna put the strap right into the middle part of the foot right about here. And then we're gonna do this stretch very simply put, hip movement ankle movement, hip movement, ankle movement. Basically what we're doing is we're creating movement in the, the hamstring and nerves that go through the hamstring with a little bit of, we're creating mobility relative to each other. Okay, a lot of times lack of hip flexion has a lot to do with adductor strains. And this not only addresses hamstring flexibility, but also some, it slides the nerve as it goes through the leg as well. You shouldn't have any leg symptoms of any type when doing this. It may feel like it's tight here, tight here, or tight here. That's completely normal to do. We're gonna do this for about a minute. And if it tends to become too intense for you, you can always do it at a lower angle as well, or take little breaks if you'd like. We're gonna switch the other foot, put the stirrup right into there, bend the other knee, and we're gonna bring the hip up. And then we're gonna bring the toes. Hip movement. toe movement. Now you can do these exercises every day. Um, there are some people that have some aggravation of their condition when they do it too much, but obviously we're all able to scale. If you find that this is too much for you, if you can only do about 30 seconds of it, just do 30 seconds. There's no shame in the game. You don't need to do a minute just like everybody else. It's just a template. Okay. If you need some cu something customized for you, you can always come see us at Performance Place or email us as well. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, by the way, too. It's in the down, down in the bottom corner. Okay, we got about 10 seconds left of this, and then we're gonna get rid of the strap and we're gonna do an adductor stretch, but we're gonna make it a little bit more active. Okay, strap goes away. You don't need it for the rest. Place your hands on your belly. Get some firmness of your guts under your, under your belly, and we're gonna try to act like there's a dot on the, on the tip of your knee and you're trying to push that down towards the bed and return, okay? As you do this, you might notice that when you get too far, you'll start to flare your ribs up, okay? What we wanna do is keep those ribs under control by creating pressure into your hands, okay? Try to move that hip dot or the knee dot down towards the bed and return it while still having pressure and control here. It may be hard to do, and this is something that's actually challenging for a lot of people, all right? A lot of times people will lose, what we call intra-abdominal pressure when they have something like a groin strain or an adductor tendonitis that develops, and this is one of the precursors that's needed for proper adductor uh, uh, function. Now let's try the other side. Pressure with the end of the hands. Try to reach the tip of the knee down to the bed. You might not be able to get as far as I, I do, that's okay. Not that I can get very far at all anyways. But we're gonna go as far. I'm gonna move my other leg just so you can see. You can do this with this leg up or the other leg uh, bent to, kind of like a clamshell, if you will. All right? See how far you can reach it every single time. But if you lose that pop up there, try to control it, push a little bit further, and see if you can get far as you possibly can if it elicits symptoms, then you obviously pause, okay? This may seem like a very simple exercise, 
but later in the video at the very end, uh, I can give you more information about why something like this helps and why intra-abdominal pressure is important in, re in regards to the adductor strains, and just for those of you who are interested. Okay, we're gonna switch to the other one now. This is called a capsule stretch, but we're gonna do it as a contract, relax type of strategy. So we're gonna push our hip down, but we're gonna push back into our hands, so it's a little bit of a fight, okay? And then relax, push with the hand, push with the knee, push with the hand, push with the knee. So it's almost like knees winning, hands winning, knees winning, hands winning. So hands winning, knees winning. I feel this right into here on me. This is a common spot. People will feel it. That's completely okay. If you feel it elsewhere, if it travels down your leg or you feel back pain or it goes into your sacrum or groin region, this is something you want to back off on range-wise or so and just explore the range that you can actually do. Contracting and relaxing. Contracting and relaxing. Next, we're going to do this on the other side as well because a lot of times people will just do one side when they have a problem and they realize after spending months of doing the contract, relax, contract, relax type of strategy, they tend to find that one hip is way more mobile than the other. And they wish they would have been doing both sides, contract, relax, knee wins, hand wins, knee wins, hand wins, knee wins, hand wins. You might notice that one side's a lot more challenging than the other, and it's not always the symptomatic side, which is the crazy thing. That's really, really common. People tend to have things, uh, like we call them dysfunctional, non-painful areas that contribute to their problem. Sometimes the lack of motion in one hip will create more strain and demand upon the other hip. Knee wins, hand wins. Knee wins, hand wins. Next, we're gonna do, to a, uh, do the same similar strategy on the glute. We're gonna switch sides here. This time we're gonna have the pulling happen across. In this case, I'm gonna have the hands win and then knee wins. Hand wins, knee wins. Now keep going at this. I'm just gonna show you a little description uh, of this. If you take a look at my hands, it's like the hand wins and the knee wins. Neither one of them really gives up. It's not like it's a passive stretch. This is never a passive stretch. It's just a seesawing amount of tension between one range and the other range. So it's almost, it's really relative. People call it contract, relax, but it's really more winning and, and losing. It's like a arm wrestling battle. No one's really losing or no one really gives up until they've lost. It's just always a seesaw of effort, okay? You're gonna feel this right into the air, this area here, completely normal. If you feel it in the groin area, discontinue this one or change the range. We're gonna switch sides. Now. I'll show you on this one that if I actually have groin pain in the front here, I would actually back off on the range. I would never let the hands fully win into this provocative position. I would just stay within the range, just out of the range that creates the groin pain in the first place. So hand wins, knee wins, hand wins, knee wins, hand wins, knee wins. Just constant effort. You might notice that your butt cheek is really working hard, completely normal, completely expected. We got about 20 seconds left. Hand wins, knee wins. Hand wins, knee wins. Hand wins, knee wins. The next one's gonna be an exercise. We're gonna stay on your back here, but we're just gonna do a little bit more of a nuance work. If you need to pause uh, or rewind this next one a little bit the first time through, please do so, because it's important. Place your hands just on your flanks like so. You're gonna be like doing little lobster claws right here. And then bring one knee up and then the other knee up. The knees are gonna be slightly away from each other, but the feet are gonna be generally kind of close. All right, in this position here, all we're gonna do is try to keep the pressure of our guts into our fingers and hold the position is all. Take a deep breath and out and in. And now try to breathe into your fingers. Some of you may notice that when you take a deep breath in, you lose pressure on the fingers. It's almost like they sink in and win. I want the guts to win a little bit at all times. 
Breathe in and out. And in and out. And if you need breaks during this one, completely normal. This is a very challenging one to do for some people. In and out. And take a break on that one. The next exercise here, the setup is very particular. So take a moment, and we're going to get the stopwatch going here in a second. I want you to lay on your side just like so. And for a lot of you, your knee uh, can't really be up this high. For, it's going to have to be a little lower like this. This other leg's kind of out of the way, and you're really not using it too much. It's mainly just um, using this part of, of the bed and the knee in this process, all right? Again, the bed works very well with this one, and so it is strongly encouraged to do it in the bed, okay? Now with this one, we're just going to do a little bit of a glute stretch back here via rolling onto this spot. So here's what it's going to look like. We're going to roll in and reach really far until your knee buries into the bed, and then you're going to roll out. So roll in, reach, 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 and then roll out. Roll in, and roll out. Keep going with that. I'm just going to describe a few things as you go. So for some people, this is a hard one to think about because it's not a common movement they do. But just think about like you're reaching for your alarm clock, and at some point, you're going to hit the point where your knee, the side of the knee, is fully buried into the bed because you're reaching so far to reach your alarm clock. That's the spot that you want. You want that spot to work, and you want it to hold you up so you can almost reach to the alarm clock, but then get lazy and go back into bed. Reach really far, and go back into bed. Now you're gonna notice it starts to really wake up the downside hip butt cheek region. That's exactly what we want. Good, now we're gonna switch sides. Okay, roll right over, reach, Press the bed with the knee, roll out. Reach for the alarm clock, press into the bed with the knee, right about there, and roll out. Reach, and roll back. Reach far, press down with the knee, and roll back. We're gonna keep doing this until that right butt cheek starts to go on fire, and that's what we want. The glute muscles are very, very important in regards to hip function. That's why we're spending some time stretching them and strengthening them. And as we start going through some of these other exercises here, it's going to be important to realize how the core is actually a big part of this puzzle. A lot of the adductor strains and groin strains we see at performance place have to do with poor core function and poor hip function as well. Great, on to the next one here. We're gonna work on the top leg this time. And so this leg is gonna be out of the way and this one is doing the work. We're going to push down with our knee into the bed, almost like you're attempting to do a side plank or push yourself up. So push and relax. It's this leg doing the work. Push and relax. And push and relax. Some of you might wonder, what's this leg doing? Nothing. All right, we're trying to isolate the adductor muscle and the inner part of your thigh. Push and relax. If we get that muscle working a little bit, then we're gonna actually help out the tendon remodel. It's gonna help the groin strain, uh, it's gonna help it decrease much quicker. If this does increase your symptoms, obviously back off a little bit on it. Not everybody's right for this, uh, especially if they have a, a strain that happened more, uh, like a fresh one. All right, we're gonna flip sides here and go right into that same position where our knee is buried in towards the floor. And we're gonna to try to push the floor or start, try to push the bed down towards the basement below us, okay? We're going to push. And I can notice actually on this side, I can actually push a lot harder. I can actually get myself up. It makes me kind of wonder if I have something going on on the right side. And matter of fact, I, I could, you know, weakness is, is something that you should be addressing. It's a very preventative way to make it so things like adductor strains don't come back. All right, push, 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 and return. Push, 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 and return. You might notice this part of your body working a little bit too. Perfectly fine, perfectly normal. If your shoulder can't take this, you can help out a little bit with both hands, or you can just go in this position here. That's a slight modification, I'm still pushing down. All right. Now, as we move our way into the next one, this one's a lot harder. This is gonna be a version of a plank. So it's gonna be here. We call this a hard style plank. Make a diamond with your fingertips and make it so your elbows kind of splay out a little bit like so. 
it's going to be from the elbows and knees, and you just pick up a little bit as if, a, as if a, like a cat was going to crawl underneath you. All right, pick up a little bit and come on down. If this feels too hard, you can move your elbows closer to underneath your shoulders. This is even pretty hard for me. This is a very challenging exercise to do. You're going to hold for a couple seconds and then come down. Now, as you start to get more advanced with it, you can use more advanced cueing as well. Imagine the bed sheet here. We're going to try to push the bed sheet away from you or push the bed away from you. And you might notice your ab muscles work even better. All right, this is a really hard ab exercise for a lot of people. All right, it doesn't mean you're weak. It just means that it needs to be challenged a little bit. Good. And the last one we're going to do is a split squat. You have to stand up to do so. Very simple. We're going to take a knee and then you're going to stand. You're going to take a knee, then you're going to stand. We're going to do this for a minute on one side and then a minute on the other. If you need help to grab something, like if I wanted to use this object over here or a chair, that's completely okay. Or if there's a balance issue, you can do it by a wall as well. Some people use a cane and they push it down as well. That's okay to do too. So nice and slow. Nothing needs to happen fast here. All right, you're gonna try to push your foot really firmly to the floor to stand up, okay? Now one minute's hard for a lot of people. That's okay, all right? If you need breaks, take a break just at the bottom here and just hang out. And then put a little effort into the foot and push yourself up, all right? Some people can only do this for like 15 seconds. That's okay, this is just a starting point. And we're gonna switch sides. Take a knee, stand up. Take a knee and stand up. So I just notice on, uh, when I'm doing this, I'm not really super heavy on the back foot. That's just one version of it. If you needed to use the back foot to help a little bit, essentially kind of pushing yourself back this way versus pushing yourself tall, that's okay as well. And so it's just any way you can find yourself up and then find yourself down. For those of you who have any heart conditions, you want to use something called the talk test. The talk test means that you can have a conversation with somebody because this does get your heart rate going a little bit and you want to make sure this is obviously safe for your heart or your lungs. But just think about it, if you do this for a month, obviously you might be a little bit sore, but man, you'd be a lot stronger. There we go. So those are some exercises you can do on a daily basis. I do encourage you to come back to the video and watch this again tomorrow. I want you to watch it daily. That way you feel like you're doing them right and you have a countdown time, which is really nice. Now, for those of you who are interested, we're going to go actually through the anatomy and the mechanics of why things like adductor strains and groin strains actually happen. That way you guys have a good education about why you're doing the things you're doing, such as in this video, and you're better educated about making decisions about what to do now from here.